All I know is one minute I'm home, basking in the wonder of my golden years. I tell you what I'm thinking, murder. That's what I'm thinking. Deacon, Deacon. Listen, it's obvious the lights are on, but nobody's home. I'm not talking about this clown. I'm talking about the pastor. You need to do something about the clown. Moving on. What about this clown? She needs to be around normal people. Do you have anybody black in this room? You know, I was thinking the same thing. You got any white folks? Mrs. Staley's sister just called. Mrs. Staley committed suicide. You're sorry to mean anything. You know she's dead because of you? I mean, get off my property. Maybe I just don't have what it takes to pastor anymore. But my sister is dead and is in hell because she didn't come that day. Father, we thank you right now and we love you for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Everybody pitched in. Even all the new members from Pastor McKnight's church. And surprisingly, even Deacon Hall. Come here, you. I want to squeak those little cheeks. is what our church has been reduced to, a horn honking circus. Now, now, honey, let's be reasonable. It's our duty to help the homeless. <laughs> well, I really do believe that she prophesied about God healing your dog. <laughs> and that was 100% accurate. Oh, that was just some kind of trick or luck. After all, she saw my dog's hair on my shirt. You are absolutely hopeless. No, I just see things as they really are. Mm. And like I've always said, even a blind hog finds an acorn every once in a while. And like I've always said, that's the dumbest, dumbest expression I've ever heard. <laughs> I'd say, but, but listen, Pastor Lynn, what are you thinking? Derek, it's not so much what I'm thinking but it's what I've been remembering the last few days. And that was this little fellow in the church I pastored many years ago. He was a teenser. And everybody thought of him as a simpleton. But to this day, I can see that little man up at the front of the church dancing with all his might before the Lord, yelling at the top of his lungs, got a good, got a good, ought ye time. I mean, he'd melt my heart. And the thing was, that little simpleton, that little angel, had more Jesus in him than 95% of the people in that church. If we give it a little more time, I do believe that the Lord will make it plain one way or the other. That's my thinking. I think I just don't want us to miss God if he really is up to something. Well, let me tell you what I'm thinking. I think that we... It's time for a five-minute break. Mm, and you're absolutely right. How'd you know I needed to go out to the car? Isn't it amazing how great moms think alike? Mm, 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 mm. What? Mm, huh? mm. That's not what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad you came today, baby. It's so good to see you again. And that, uh, that outfit is working. That, uh, that off-the-shoulder thing is looking really good. You know, you know, maybe later on we'll check that out a little better. Yeah. Boy, you so bad. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, lovebirds. Newlyweds, are we? It's not like that. I'm Deacon Roderick Samuels. Pastor McKnight's Deacon Samuels? Yes, and who are you? 
I don't think the question should be who I am, but what you're doing. This young lady's having some personal issues, and I'm trying to conduct some counseling. Aren't you supposed to be in the leadership meeting? First of all, the meeting's not for another half of an hour. Second of all, Ms. Malone is a child of God in need, and it's my duty as a deacon to care for her first. That meeting would just have to wait for a little while. First of all, the sanctuary is no place to conduct this kind of counseling. Second, I'll let Pastor McKnight know you're on your way in. Miss Malone? Yeah, you do that. See? Well, I guess I better leave. No, no, no. You don't worry about her. So you don't let all that stuff get to you. You don't worry about it a bit. But I guess I better go ahead and get into that meeting here pretty quick because apparently they can't get anything done without me. Right. Okay? Okay. So you don't worry about it. I'll see you later, okay? All right. All Bye, right. baby. Bye now. Mm, mm, mm. Love and kisses, everybody. I am so sorry, but something's come up. I have to take care of it now. So would you mind if we just picked up next week where we left off? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Pastor so, McKnight, I may I see you, you please? You, yes, ma'am. You wanna Deacon Hall, would yeah. you join us? Uh, okay, I have to make sure that Mary's car starts. That's fine. That's fine. Please, okay. please. Yes, ma'am. Pastor McKnight. Uh-huh. I do believe I just met your deacon in the sanctuary. Was he on his way in? I uh, don't think so. Well, what was he doing? According to him, he was counseling. Uh -huh. According to me, he was having a hot date. A lot of kissy face stuff. I believe her name is Miss Malone. Okay. That would be Bitsy. Bitsy Malone? She goes by Choo Choo. Your deacon is dating a woman named Bitsy Choo Choo Malone? Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to regret asking. Mm -hmm. Has the train left the station? Huh? Are they... Huh? How old are you? Please don't ask me to draw a picture. Are they doing the dirty? Oh, that I don't know. Did you ask? No. I'm not, I'm not too smart. Help me out here. So your deacon, your head deacon, mm -hmm. best I know, your only deacon, is playing footsie with some woman named Bitsy Choo Choo Malone. And it never crossed your mind to ask him if they're in sin? Well, understand this right here. She had a hard time growing up, and now that she's back in the church, I didn't want to come off so hard or seem judgmental towards her. You know? How in the world is she supposed to grow in faith if she's consorting with some guy of limited character and certainly low moral standards? But how do wait, you... Wait, wait, wait. Let's lay a foundation to build this conversation on. Okay. In the throne room, there are four living creatures, and they're calling back and forth over the throne of God. What? Holy, holy, holy. Yes. Is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. Right. Which means as far back into eternity that way, they were always crying holy. Right now, they're still crying holy. And as far into eternity that way, they will always be crying holy. So it's imperative that we be holy. And don't forget, God said to Abraham, even as I am holy, you be holy too. And if we fast forward, of course, to the New Testament, we can land any place there, but let's just take a stop at 1 Peter, where Peter said, even as he who's called you is holy, be holy in everything you do. 
So we have to be holy, especially in our leadership. Now answer me this. What happens, generally speaking, in a church when the leadership is found in sin? They usually just split. You're right. What else happens? Or they just individually leave. That's exactly right. And they usually do it for one of two reasons. One, they figured, well, if the leadership can't stay holy, what hope is there for us? But the one that really breaks my heart is when they leave because they say they're hypocritical. So what do they do? They go out the back door and they tell half the planet the church is hypocritical. We have to take the holiness of God's people seriously, especially the leadership. True. <sighs> Things were going so well, you know. Deacon Samuels was a big part of our church growth. Ah. And I guess I just misjudged the situation. Okay. Well, we all make mistakes. And let me tell you how I feel about our relationship. Besides the fact that I love you. <laughs> I see us as iron sharpening iron. And there are things that I'll be able to share with you that will help you grow. And you've known me long enough to know there are going to be a whole lot of things that you're going to be able to share with me yep. so that I can grow. And that's what we're doing right here. We're growing together as leadership so that we can be the leaders that God has called us to be. And that now that we've discussed this, we'll make sure that the leadership we surround his people with are people of high character and holiness. So it's a good thing. Derek, we have got a problem and this thing cannot be ignored. I can't help but to agree. You know, I mean, honestly, it's been building for quite a while now. Really? And you know what? He hasn't always been this way. Really? But one thing I've noticed about him, mm -hmm. as the church grew, mm -hmm. so did his ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to him about it? I did. And sometimes he would respond. Okay. But he would always get back into that thing of adore me instead of adore him. Please don't tell me that I just saw that crazy clown just walking through the sanctuary. She's back. Nah, you've been seeing things. You know, old age starting to set in with you. Mm. Mm. Do we need to add that to the prayer list? Ooh, if it's Deacon Hall, yes, by all means. We need to add that poor soul to the prayer list. It's pitiful. I tell you, it's pitiful. You two think you're real. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, we were discussing Deacon Samuels. Mm -hmm. So, strike one. He has a total disregard for the seriousness of responsibilities of his position. Strike two. I'm fairly certain he's a liar. He knew what time this meeting was. Am I correct? Absolutely. I took it upon myself to even call him personally last night to remind him. Well, I have to admit, I did give him a call, you know, one deacon to another. One deacon to another. And Gina even put it in the bulletin to remind us all last Sunday. So there's no excuse. Just as I suspected. All right, the only thing left to do right now is let's play some cards. Play some cards? But what about Deacon Samuels? Oh, we're going to get to Deacon Samuels shortly. But right now, I just feel the need to play me some gin rummy. Gin rummy? I don't play that. So, you want to be head deacon, but you don't want to put your trust in your pastor? Uh, it's not exactly that. Lamar, believe it or not, this is church business and you need to be here. So, I'm going to go get the cards. You two decide who's going to deal. I'll be back. How do you play gin rummy anyway? Oh man, it's just a thing of sets and runs. Yeah, I'd like to run her right on out of this <laughs> church. That's exactly what I'd like to do. How long's it been since uh, Deacon Samuels left? About 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Hey! 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 Well, 
how long does it take to get from here to his house? Mm, about 25 minutes. That'll about do it. All right, let's go see if we got a strike three. And Deacon Hall, you're coming too. Uh oh, no, 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 no. Gina has already warned me about this. You're getting ready to start some trouble. Trouble? I don't no, want any trouble. No, 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 no. Stop mm -mm. that. Now, all we're going to do is go on a little field trip. Do a little research. I'm not going anywhere until you put that collar back on. At least then I'll know you'll behave. Coward. Bag. Poop. <laughs> oh my goodness. What am I dealing with a bunch of two-year-olds? <laughs> Come on. Pastor, this the place? Uh-huh. It is. Okay. Uh, Pastor, what do you plan on doing? I'm just going to make a little home visit and see if we can catch our kissy face deacon kissy facing. I, I don't know about this. Deacon, you actually think you're going to stop Pastor Lynn from doing anything once she gets her mind set on it? I don't think so. Gentlemen, let the games begin. <sighs> Hey, where are you going? The door's this way. Yep, and I'm heading this way. Oh, dear God, I pray she does not take that collar off. I'd like to glue it on her. Oh, shit. <sighs> Pastor, this is really not a good idea. You know this is called trespassing. Maybe she wants a jailhouse ministry. <laughs> you know what? There's an easier way to do this. Shush, shush. It's just what I thought. Dick, get up here and take a peek. I'm no peeping Tom. I'm not peeking through anybody's window. Tell me we're about to make the decision on that head deaconship. Get up here. I know I'm going to regret this. Is that his wife? If it was his wife, we wouldn't be here. Well, why didn't you just tell me that? Well, basically because I so love to see you squirm. <laughs> He's going to have a hard time explaining this. You think? Mm-hmm. Pastor, your turn. I don't know about this. And wow, I am beholding strike three. And he's out. All right, let's go take care of this. What are we going to do tonight? Oh, you know, I mean, you know, if we figure something out, you know, that won't be any big deal. <laughs> we can get anything done here. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh What's go, wrong? go hide, go hide. Uh, just, just go in the bathroom over Someone's coming up the wall. Boxer rocks, thinks we can't hear him. Pastors, is uh, everything okay? I wasn't expecting y'all today. Oh, everything's fine, man. We were just in the neighborhood. Thought we'd stop by and finish our little conversation. Well, besides that, it's possible I might have to ask you to forgive me because maybe I've judged you prematurely. Oh, how so? Didn't you just see what we saw in the bushes? Shh. May we come in? Well, I, uh... Thank oh. you. Okay. Okay. Well, I certainly hope we haven't interrupted anything here. As Pastor mentioned, we just had some extra time this afternoon. Thought we'd come by for a visit. Okay. Hey, you mind if I use your restroom? A whole lot of coffee and a small bladder. Yeah, sure. It's uh, right over there. Okay. Oh, 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 no, no, uh, um, wait a minute, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the plumbing's messed up in that bathroom, um, you'll have to use the one in my bedroom. Okay. It's, it's right, right around the corner there. All right, thank you. 
You had anybody look at that plumbing? Um, yeah, uh, well, th they're coming to look at it tomorrow. Deacon Hall. Yeah. Doesn't Deacon Ragnall just down the road? Yeah, he sure does. If I recall, doesn't he know something about plumbing? Yeah, he did the plumbing and wiring in this whole house. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Give me your phone. Where's your phone? You quit crabbing. Oh. We're going to have him down here in less than 10 minutes, and we're going to get your plumbing fixed for you. Uh, no, 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 Pastor. That's, that, that's okay. Uh, this, this guy's done work for me before, and he's, he's really good. So is Deacon Raglan, and he's free. <laughs> Why, Deacon Hall, I declare, I do believe you're catching on to the flu of things oh. around here. <sighs> Yeah, you feel better? Not really. See, when I was in the bathroom, I happened to stumble across a few items. And these items here, they really make me wonder. I mean, really make me wonder. Well, I'm certainly interested. How about you? You know, as a matter of fact, I think I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deacon Samuel, before I start pulling items out of this bag, do you have anything you'd like to say? I don't think so. Hmm. Well, let the show and tell begin. You know, I'm getting a sick feeling that Pastor McKnight is getting too fond of your kind of shenanigans. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. And my joy overfloweth. Mm. <laughs> All righty, Pastor. Make Mama proud. First item, please. Okay, well, first of all, Dick and Samuel, what size shoe do you wear? I happen to wear a size 12. Why? First item up, a pink size 9 women's tennis shoe. Haha. <laughs> They're not good. Mm. That is not good. Mm -mm. Nope. Definitely not yours. Well, look, not that this is any of y'all's business at all. But sometimes, after Bitsy and I work out, she leaves her shoes over here. I bet you do work out. Right. And you kiss your mama with those lying lips? Let me just tell you something about talking uh, about mama. Ah, listen to me. Listen, next item up. Yes. A bar of Earth Day Laurels soap. <laughs> right next to the bar of Old Spice soap in the same Shower stall. Take a whiff. Oh, this mm. not good. Smells. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Eau de la Rose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only a woman would use this. Mm-hmm. You really went into my shower? It's right there in front of the toilet. You can't miss it. That was quick thinking. Mm -hmm. Your mama's so proud. Well, I have to admit, I do like her taste in slippers. Really, Pastor, at a time like this, you talking about slippers? Enough of that. Rod, stand up like a man and just tell them. Who cares what they think? They don't own you, and they sure enough don't own me. Well, item number three. Oh, my Lord. Give me that nightgown. This is mine. Strike three, gentlemen. Strike three. Deacon Samuels, whether you like it or not, I am your senior pastor, and I need to fully understand the situation. So my understanding is that you are a leader in this church, Deacon Samuels, and yet I find you to be both a liar and a fornicator. A liar and a what? A fornicator. Huh? It mean he been doing with you before marriage what ain't supposed to happen till after. Look, I don't know what y'all getting at, but you can't talk to my man that way. Besides, Rod and I are in love. Oh, really? So, Deacon, when are you two gonna tie the knot? What's the wedding date? Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I can marry you two today. Right hey. here, right now. That is an awesome idea. Let's get married, baby. Let's get married right now. Hey, Deacon, you know what? I can be your best man, and Deacon Hall here can be Bitsy's maid of honor. How about it? Man, if you lost your mind. <laughs> nice big pink dress. Pink? Pink? 
I'm out of here. Oh, sit down. Senior Deacon Hall. So close and yet so far away. You know, I'm beginning to understand Apostle Paul's thorn in the side. Can we get serious about the issue at hand here, guys? Deacon Samuels, are you prepared to marry this woman or not? Are you, baby? Look, right now is not the time to talk about it. We'll talk about this later, okay? Come on, baby. When is the right time? We need to pick a time and a date, and we need to let the whole church know. Look, I never said we were going to get married, okay? I never used those words. But you made me believe we were. I'm sorry, but I cannot help what you believe. What? You made me believe we were in love. From the bushes, we thought you were in love too. Huh? Well, Pastor Lynn, are you ready for what we discussed the other day? I do believe I am. The envelope Please. My pleasure. And the winner is? I do believe we have a choice in here. Mm-hmm. Would you care to pick one? Read it. You have been found to be in violation of Timothy's requirements for the behavior of a deacon. You remain unrepentant, therefore you are released from your position. My brother, you do seem a little unrepentant. Now deacon, you've been given two choices here. Are you satisfied with the one that you have or would you like to pick again? Okay, fine. I'll play along with y'all's little game. Submit yourself to correction and... And what? And become the kind of leader who pleases the heart of God. Listen, dear. This is a very serious situation here. But I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give you three days to come up with a decision. And what I suggest to you is for you to lay down your prideful ways, Deacon Samuels, and not only think, but pray. And when you've prayed about it, and if that's a yes, meet us at the church, 5 p.m. on Thursday. Good enough? Yeah, sure. Well, all right, Pastor Lynn, Deke, shall we go? I am right behind you. I know when I'm not wanted. <sighs> Bitsy, come here and let me talk to you for a second. Okay, you're going to make me submit to correction too? Oh, no. This is what the Lord just instructed me to tell you. Bitsy, he loves you. The God of the entire universe created you in his own image. Why? Because he wants a personal, intimate relationship with you. Why would he want that? Because he wants to flow through you, through you, Bitsy Malone, so that he can do great things on the earth. That is awesome. <laughs> but I'm no deacon. I'm sure no saint. Oh, honey. But what you are is a broken vessel. You have been hurt. You have been abused terribly. Okay, look, I, I've had enough. Bitsy, I'm out of here. I gotta go. Are you coming with me or not? Are you kidding me? Just go. Oh, Bitsy. It's so simple, honey. What God is saying to you right now is just come just as you are. Come and let him make your life a thing of beauty. I tell you, here, let me give you my card. Now when you're ready to talk, you just come and we'll talk. Oh, Bitsy, honey, God loves you so much.
Well, Pastor Lynn, looks like he's not going to show. So, should we remove him from his position? Nah, not yet. Let's, let's wait and see if he shows up at all. Then we'll make that decision. Uh, guys, I hate to bring this up, but since we've got a little time on our hands, you do realize that premarital sex has become the social norm. And people are finding no harm in it. Yes, but God wouldn't tell us not to do something if there wasn't any harm in it or there weren't any consequences. He's a good God, and He only wants what's best for us. Now you're talking some sense. You know, things have sure changed since I was a young boy, and not for the good. Mm -hmm. I wish that more pastors would speak about this from behind the pulpit. Mm. You know what, Deacon, I I think a lot of them have given up. Or they just feel like no one wants to hear what they have to say. Well, there's another reason, too. They're afraid if they discuss the moral issues of the people that'll ruffle the feathers of the flock. And that just might affect their paycheck. Their money. Money. There you go. But at the same time, Pastor, you know, facts are still facts. And these issues are getting worse and worse as the days go by, mm -hmm. especially if they cross cultural or ethnic boundaries, mm. and they must be discussed. You're right. And don't forget about the problems with our government trying to be the God of the people. Mm -hmm. And they're not helping. They aren't. Mm -hmm. They aren't. But let's go back to this word culture that you used. The only culture that we're to be concerned about is God's culture. Amen to that. Amen. Did you hear that? Somebody's coming. Wow, hopefully it's Deacon Samuels. Maybe, just maybe, he's decided to become the man God has called him to be. 459, one minute to spare. Ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. There's nothing more beautiful mm -mm. than repentance and forgiveness. Yes, yes. <sighs> so it's not the deacon but the broken vessel who's chosen for God. Amen. Amen.